Good afternoon. Thank you. I have a confession to make. I'm here because I promised the event organizers that I would give a technically based talk. I lied. <laughs> because I realized that there is actually a much more powerful and important message that I can give to this group of scientists and engineers today. We need to have the talk. Not, not, okay, not the talk, but that would be a little awkward. But, but there's this communications message that a lot of people naturally seem to figure out as they go through life, and scientists and engineers, not so much. <laughs> you all know what I'm talking about, and that's why you're laughing. To quote my son's favorite cartoon character, Lightning McQueen, when we open our mouths, we sometimes produce feelings in others that they themselves don't understand. <laughs> we, I, I watch scientists and engineers talking to other people, and that person gets this look on their face, this stupor of thought. And it's like they've been plugged into an electrical outlet. I am guilty of this myself. Uh, I have done this both figuratively and literally. As a missionary in Argentina, my buddy Peter and I did a little welfare check on a family, and we found them with a two-foot-tall plastic Christmas tree and a 30-foot strand of outdoor Christmas lights. They had a box of plug parts, and they were trying to get the lights to light up. In Argentina, plugs aren't molded all the time. You can actually swap the parts out. And Argentina is also one of those countries where 240 vol volts pours out of holes in the wall, and sometimes even standardized electrical outlets. So <laughs> Peter grabs the box of plug parts and the strand of lights, and for some unknown reason, he hands me the other end of the strand. <laughs> and then he gets to work. Well, I'm sitting there entertaining five Argentine kids, so I get a little silly and I start swinging the end around, and I completely forget about what Peter is doing. I'm running around the kids, and I'm running around the wall, and I run it into an electrical outlet, and I plugged in Peter. <laughs> and he, the poor guy, he went from kneeling to quasi-standing until I unplugged him. And, and the kids were laughing just like you were. In fact, they could hardly breathe. <laughs> and unfortunately, um, Peter couldn't breathe either. And, and all he could do afterwards was sit on the curb with a little bit of drool. He couldn't speak Spanish for three days. <laughs> we do this to people. You know this. We go to social events, and the conversation is over as soon as somebody asks us, what do you do for a living? <laughs> we, and it comes up right after the weather. That's, that's if you can make it through the weather, because there are those of you, you know who you are. Somebody mentions the blue sky, and you explain Rayleigh scattering. <laughs> I want to explain this using a bucket. You see, we all carry around a little bucket. It's our brain bucket. We're all a bunch of bucket heads. And in our bucket, we put marbles. Sometimes we like white marbles. Some people like cat's eyes. Some people like a smattering of things, right? But people are actually very particular about what they put in their bucket. And of course, we all know some people with holes in their bucket. And as we get older and we lie down more, our buckets tend to tilt over and we lose our marbles. That's a fact of life. But what happens with us is we go around talking to people, our spouses, our, our peers even, sometimes our customers, and we use big esoteric words, words like, Esoteric, <laughs> function generator, spectrum analyzer, distribution amplifier, pixie card, oscilloscope. Those are perfectly normal science words. Those are not English words. <laughs> you cannot communicate with people using those words. When you have a big breakthrough in the lab and you run out of it and you run up to the first person you see and you want to tell them, and the one other fiber on the function generator was going into the frequency column, and I figured it out. There's dispersion. <laughs> you 
You just plug them into 240 volts, and they're sitting on the curb with a little bit of drool. And you know what? After a while, people see you coming. <laughs> they cover that bucket right up. Whoa, buddy. You keep those science marbles over there. But the problem is, this gets really frustrating because it builds a situation where there's a wall now between us, between the work that we do that is really cool and awesome and the things that people need and the problems they have that that work actually meets. And I know, I know those of you who feel frustrated. I felt frustrated. It's easy to feel like the work is underfunded, that it's not appreciated by the customer, that it's not appreciated by management. When you write your end of year report, you feel not adequately recompensed for your efforts in the year. You feel stifled. Overall, the general feeling is stifled. And what is our response a lot of times as scientists and engineers? Well, let's plug on. Let's keep going. I'm going to work harder, and I'm going to get the results. And when people see the results, they're going to see how important this is. And then they'll come. That is a logical fallacy. That is a lie. The breakdown comes because we focus on ourselves instead of focusing on the customer or the other person that we're talking to. I can't tell you how many times I've watched scientists and engineers try to give somebody what they want them to be interested in. And that doesn't work. You can't give that to people. People like the marbles that they like naturally. And we need to learn to craft our message in terms so that they look like their marbles. Because when people see their problems solved by science that is looking like their problems, then they love our science. And it's a little bit like if somebody came up to you and said, hey, what time is it? And you explained to them how a watch worked. It takes the focus off of them, it puts it on you and what you know, and it doesn't tell them what they wanted to know in the first place. It is a really poor breakdown. Working on these communication skills is terribly important. People speak a different language. We have to become multilinguists, in a sense, across different professional fields. And the payoffs can be tremendous. In fact, I can tell you that they can be career-changing. So I was once a poor graduate student with two kids and a wife, and I fed them first, but I like to eat, too. <laughs> so I wrote fellowship application after fellowship application for two years. I couldn't get a fellowship for two years, and the last application that I swore I'd ever write panned out, and I got a Department of Defense smart fellowship. And when I asked the sponsor why they picked me, they said, well, your package was the only one with the word laser, and we need a laser guy. I did not sell myself well. <laughs> but thank goodness they took me. Because of that, I ended up working with a group that knows how to make marbles. If somebody needs white marbles, they will take the science and they can make white marbles. Small marbles, big marbles, metallic marbles, blue marbles, it doesn't matter. That group is a marble machine. In fact, they are so good at this that in one year they had the funds to take the group from about five people to almost 30, and became the biggest atomic physics group in the Department of Defense. That lesson in marble making is the most important one of my career. Because when you couch your science in terms of the marbles that people are attracted to naturally, they will pay for them. And they will advertise for you for free. They will tell other people how cool your science is for you. Now contrast that experience with graduate fellowships to how I became the speechwriter for the Air Force Research Laboratory. Atomic physicists are not speechwriters. I applied for this position specifically because I believed I could not get it. <laughs> I was practicing job seeking. I wanted the feedback, I wanted to incorporate it, and then I would use it later on. So I sat down with my program manager, I pulled out my marble making kit, and I rewrote my resume. 
And then every single thing that went wrong with a job, uh, with applying for a job, went wrong. The week that applications were due, my house flooded. Later on, I found that resume and I sent it in anyways, and it was silence. Several weeks later, I got a video conference interview request. I was traveling, I told them I couldn't make it, they could go on without me, no love lost, I'd be okay. When I got back, I got another interview request. I said, fine, let's do this, I want the feedback. I went home that night, and my wife and kids were projectile vomiting. <laughs> I was on sick leave for the next two days, called up Wendy to see if we could put that thing around my house. <laughs> we needed to decontaminate the house. So I come in to the interview, tired, grumpy, but I wanted the feedback. And that's not even the end of the story, because before the interview could end, this group of people waltzes into the conference room to watch Star Trek on their lunch hour. <laughs> I kindly inform them that I am in the middle of a job interview. <laughs> Curiously, they sit down on camera. <laughs> True story. I can't even tell you, when they offered me the job and told me I was the top applicant, I was so surprised I had the impertinence to ask if I was the only applicant. <laughs> I mean, again, I can map out the orbit of an electron, but just ask my boss how many times he's thrown up a map of AFRL and had to explain that his office is not in Kentucky. <laughs> and the difference to me between not being able to get a graduate fellowship if my life depended on it, to getting a job well outside of my expertise and skill set, boils down to communication skills. And so I challenge you, I challenge you to go out and take your science and look at the marbles that are all around. Look at your customers, look at the situations where you've been frustrated and start to shape it. Your scientists, experiment with it, practice it. Take it to social events, take it to peers in other fields, shop it around, get feedback, change it, learn other professional languages, and then go out and play for all the marbles.